In the following video, I will show you how to use Catman in Analysis Mode. You can access the Catman Analysis Mode via the Start menu, or directly from a DAC project after completion of your measurement. I performed six tests on components with different sensors and recorded this in a video. I would now like to further use these tests by presenting the analysis in two variants. First, I will show you an analysis with some calculations, including some graphical visualization, as well as the export of these results. Then I will show you how easy it is to automate all calculations, displays, data export, and reporting with an analysis project. If you want to start an analysis from the Catman Start menu, go to Analyze and then Create a new analysis project, load a previously created analysis project, or simply click Continue to continue the last analysis project. But now to the analysis directly after the measurement. So now I'll take a small time jump to the end of my six measurements from the last video. Here we are. I've done six tests on five test specimens. You can find all the details in the video, first measurements, step by step. With Analyze Measurement Data, I can switch to the analysis mode. Now I can either create the visualization myself, use the visualization of the current DAC project, here real-time graphs are converted into post-process graphs, or evaluate the measurement with an already created analysis project. You have the option of assigning several analysis projects to the DAC project so that you can load the most suitable analysis project. I will create a visualization for myself here. When changing from the DAC mode to the analysis mode, the last save measurement will usually load into the analysis project. But not in this case, because I simply had interrupted the cycle in the middle. Therefore, I will first switch to the Test Explorer to search for my measurement data. Using the Favorites folder, I can navigate very quickly to my measurement data. Working with search filters, I can use the test parameters from the measurement to find exactly the right test. I'm looking for an operator, serial numbers, a comment. We had repeated this measurement. This measurement had worked better. Or for my B24 series. First, I'll load the first test into the analysis project. Now I can get an overview of the data with the data viewer. The tests are displayed in a tree structure. It contains the test parameters, i.e. also operator, series, and serial number, but also a whole range of automatically generated information about the test procedure. My recorded measured values are contained in the test data. Now I can drag channels into the data viewer and get a first overview. I can also select multiple channels and add the selected channels. The channel info already provides a lot of important information. In the preview window, you can assess the signal curve. Afterwards, I can remove single or all channels and view the next channels. It is noticeable for the strains that the linear strain gauge was not set to zero before beginning my test. I forgot about this and will have to correct for it. To prevent this from happening, you can also let the zeroing be done automatically before starting the measurement in the DAC job. In the computations, I'll now create calculation channels. The differential force between force A and B shall be calculated. The channels are calculated exactly as in the measurement mode in the formula editor. A name and a unit are assigned, and the calculation is created. Now I will do the zeroing of the linear strain gauge that I had forgotten about earlier. For this, I use the predefined formula Remove Offset. You will see the results immediately in the visualization. Now to the visualization. I'll display the individual forces A, B, and C in a post-process graph, and enter Force Overview as the title in the graph. I will also like to show the total force and the differential force in the same graph. Therefore, I'll drag the channels into the graph, then create a new axis layer from the curves. 
Finally, adjust the colors of the curve. On another panel, I would like to display the trigger time point in more detail. I'll create a post-process graph from the total force and also use trigger time as the title. The trigger time should be one second. Now I want to display the measuring points as well. To do this, I'll adjust the axis a little bit. I'll only display the time range from 0 0.99 to 1.01. .01. This is the first measured value that is greater than 200 Newton. Now I'll create another panel. In another post-process graph, I'll show the strain channel with and without offset correction. As you can see, the linear strain gauge now starts at zero. In this graph too, I'll create a title. Now I could already give my boss a short interim report by email. To do this, I go to the individual graphics and copy them via export print to the clipboard and then to the email. This is also quickly done. Right-click on the graphic, export print, I'll use PNG as the format, copy, and paste into the document, email, or Word. Right-clicking on the graph allows you to save the graph and use it in another analysis or make it available to your colleagues. Done. Now the email can be sent. I'll now export the data. I want to save all measured and calculated data from our test and the data I just calculated as an Excel file. I can simply insert my test data completely. The other channels can be marked and inserted, or simply inserted by drag and drop. I specify Excel binary data as the data format to be saved. After clicking on the Export button, I select the PC destination for the data storage. Storing measurement data in Excel is not very effective and takes a long time, but is often required. Here now, a short look at the Excel data. In the upper area are the header data, and here are the measurement data. Now also the export is completed. Now I want to create a complete report with the details. To do this, I will add a few more panels and some special tables. I use a metadata table. This table contains all essential information of the test. No further configuration is required. The traceability table contains important information, such as the sample rates, sensors, filters, zero values, and many other information about the added channels. As expected, the statistics table contains statistical values of the added channels. I'll create the report from this Word document. This is my document template. The document currently only consists of text and the bookmarks. Now I will choose this document template from the report generator. I have already prepared this Word document. Now I choose a file name and a path for my new report. I add the date and time from the placeholder and choose to open the report once it has been generated. Finally, I'll add a bookmark for each object. With this bookmark, I control where in the report the respective visualization object is inserted. This bookmark must therefore be named exactly as in my document template. When I have completed this, I can create the report with one click. Here is the report. I'll show how to create a report in detail in a separate video. Since the calculations, the export, and the report creation have been done in this test, I'll show you how easy it is to perform the next test. In the Test Explorer, I'll remove the current test, but keep the calculation channels.
When I now load the next test, the calculations are carried out based on this test data and all values are displayed. This is the new force overview. For comparison, the force overview from test 1 Here is the name of the test file from test 2. The export channels, too, are still defined, so I can immediately export all previously defined channels. Now, I only need to adapt the name of the export file. And again, I can create a report with just one click. Here's the report. I can now add comments or ratings, and I'm done. Now I'll save the analysis project. Here I could also save a reference to the measurement data used in the analysis, or even save the measurement data in the analysis project. That doesn't make sense for my tests, therefore I'll save without the tests. Catman asks whether the analysis project shall be assigned to the DAC project. Yes, please. Finally, I'll show you how to use an already created analysis immediately after the measurement. I'll go back to the DAC mode. In the DAC job, I'll adjust the job parameters. I want to perform only one measurement and deactivate the repetitions. Now I'll perform a measurement on a component of the B54 series. I'll start the measurement. After the measurement, I'll add the serial number and a comment and go to Analyze Measurement Data. Choose my analysis project. Export my data. And create my report. As you can see, the Catman Analysis Mode is also intuitive to use. Further videos review the available functions in the analysis mode as well as calculations, visualizations, and reporting within the analysis mode. Professional trainings are available at our HBK Academy for beginners and advanced, of course also for Catman. If you have any questions or suggestions, please do not hesitate to contact us. See you next time!